matter. On to the stage. Look at this. All right, so you guys know that the mother of all rallies was to end the political violence. It's about freedom of speech. It's about celebration. So what we are going to do is something you're not used to, and we're going to give you two minutes of our platform to put your message out. Now, whether they disagree or agree with your message is irrelevant. It's the fact that you have the right to have the message. Just like all of them have the right to their message. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? My name is Hawk Newsom. I am the president of Black Lives Matter in New York. I am an American. And the beauty of America is that when you see something broke in your country, you can mobilize to fix it. So you ask why there's a Black Lives Matter? Because you can watch a black man die and be choked to death on television and nothing happened. We need to address that. We need to fix it. So I said, I said that I am an American. Secondly, I am a Christian. I don't think my Bible is any different from yours when it says, love thy neighbor. It didn't say that that, mer that neighbor had to be from the continental United States. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We love one another. The reason why we fight is to draw attention to issues and to fix it. We are not anti-cop. about the situation and buzzing about the situation and backbiting the situation instead of dealing with it head on. So many folks came to me with concern about uh, Black Lives Matter of Greater New York's uh, exhibition and conduct at the Moore rally uh, two weeks ago. And uh, we need to deal with it. Essence of what people have concern about. 
Right, so seeing it, but you can also see it raw. I seen it. I seen it from the point where he was called up stage. Right, right. And Angelique also films that part, and then you get the raw on stage, and then them exiting the stage and interactions exiting the stage after that. Maybe about ten to twelve minutes after that. It's about forty-five minutes long. So at a certain point, I want to say after you know. There's an interaction with a small child. Then the her raw footage is cut, um, and then we had the uh, media pieces. So it was our intent that Hope Newsom would be here in order to address the group. Uh, address uh, what occurred at the rally and give any kind of clarifying information or statements that he may have had. Um, I will read out loud the uh, statement that he issued on my personal uh, Facebook page. Okay, so, dear New York City activists, grassroots community of organizations, we are in receipt of your summons requesting a meeting on Tuesday, September 26, 2017. However, we respectfully decline such a re meeting for the following reason. Given the unprofessional manner in which you requested this meeting, we at BLMNY choose not to engage in an online Twitter slash Facebook or Instagram quote unquote war of words with fellow activists which would not lead to a productive platform to improve the communities of color we fight for. Nevertheless, if at some future date, you choose to request a meeting with an agenda, strategies and or solutions to improve communities of color and you invite quote unquote elder members of the activist community, we would consider such a meeting as aligning with the goals and mission of Black Lives Matter New York. Are uh, any grassroots statements from the grassroots community concerning the issue at hand, which is the more rally and the use of the red, black, and green uh, flag and its symbolism at that event, as well as any comments or statements that were made at that event. Um, I would also encourage everybody, this is the purpose of the meeting, to be, you know, upfront about anything that your individual organization has in mind going forward with respect to Black Lives Matter of Greater New York and the collective as a whole. The thing I just have to say about this is the fact that I think it was wrong to give the outright a platform. I believe that, honestly, I think I've heard my group mostly stands. I think it's just about the outright platform and how dangerous the situation can become. I just feel there was a clear violation of for just to have RBG, but just saying those words as we spoke about earlier, just saying I'm American is different things like that, and that video was a clear violation. And also, like, um, when people saw that video, they probably viewed the whole as, like, supporting that message. Took issue with the um, red, black, and green being convoluted in that messaging, and uh, that was his biggest concern. Uh, you are welcome to also please comment on behalf of Africans helping Africans. He keeps the point in the word he has bought. He says he's not going to come to a meeting because he wants other people there. Well, first of all, you need to address this issue. And then we can have another meeting to address any other issue. He is, he is not a part of the movement. And he is acting like he's portraying to be a part of this movement. He is not. He's a fraud. You know, so we need to continue to blast him until he comes to a meeting and address this issue of using RBG. You can't use RBG and talk about you're American and talk about you're a Christian and all this extra nonsense and disrespecting black women when you, when every chance you get a chance, every time you get a chance. So we really need to have him at a meeting to really discuss this. Not, you know, again, I agree with the long time. Thank you, Tim. As, a, as for training himself as a leader of BLM, and then holding that platform, and then the widespread view in which it got is deeply problematic for grassroots movements going on in New York City. Um, when you don't take, a, don't even take accountability, come and show up, it's also disheartening. However, um, I think some of his rhetoric 
on the platform or on, on the stage was very problematic. Mm -hmm. um, we, I am for abolition as part of the coalition, and I think any rhetoric, any rhetoric around anti-bad cop, <clears throat> not anti-cop, is very problematic. I um, also think that any time you're using a space for integrationists, but also a collaborative work with Trump supporters, completely derails the conversation into the fact that local activism that affect black lives have been going on before Trump, right? Have been going on under Obama, have been going on also under Bill de Blasio, and, and even having Bratton as our commissioner um, previously and currently having O'Neill. So I think it, it derails the fact that we are really working towards local, local solutions so that we can better the conditions of our community. So um, that, is, that is what we'll share. Is number one, you're, you're going around using the, not only the RBG, but also a title of the Movement for Black Lives. And yet again, on your platform, you're contradicting everything that we stand for. Um, and not, not only that, using grassroots for legitimacy, while all the while capitulating the white supremacy. It's bad enough that we have to deal with liberals and moderates and Democrats. We already have to deal with that on the left. But then you go over to the right and then extend an olive branch to people who don't believe in our humanity to try to get them to believe that you're, that, 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 to, that you're human. It was complete capitulation. And on top of that, another issue I have with today, um, the way in the manner in which um, the, the D.C. chapter was not reached out to for this. But then again, you're um, flouting of this dismissal of this meeting that we're having here when you're being called out and, and, and you're not showing up here. I have an issue with that because it's showing that even though in, um, you, you, in your rhetoric you say that you want to work together, provide solutions together, yet you're not even willing to have open communication with us. And saying that you don't want to get into a, a line of online words and stuff like that, we want to talk face to face. We ain't talking about going online, things like that. That's what this is, you know. So I, I found that to be a little bit very insulting. Um, I think for me, I agree with what a lot of folks have said that um, the presence of BLM at a pro-Trump rally is problematic, and to use the iconography of Black liberation movements and our rhetoric and to twist it to fit that audience. Um, I think really muddles and dilutes the effectiveness that everyone in the room has been working towards in terms of black liberation and police abolition. Because I have a message from who was the founder of Black Soldiers, I'm the co-founder. So just, just briefly, just real quick, again, we both are students of Khalid Abdul Muhammad, and you know, he, he is the black power general. If anybody anyone has knowledge of, of uh, Khalid Abdul Muhammad's bio, you know he's uncompromising which is what Mr. Newsom was doing on that stage, was being compromising, all right? You don't wear RBG. RBG is not compromising, okay? He's, he claims he's an American, right? Right there on stage. His flag should be red, white, and blue. Anyone who claims to be American, their flag is red, white, and blue. Let's be clear about that. Because, you know, it's a you know not everyone has the, the knowledge or knows exactly what RBG represents and what it stands for. They don't know the history of it. And this is, this is, again, problematic because people that don't know the history of it, know, you know, have knowledge about it, they see people like him adorning it and wearing it and, you know, and, and stuff like that. They think that his words and his actions represent what the colors represent, which is a misrep... His actions and his, his uh, position is a misrepresentation, okay? Uh, no, again, we don't show up at, at rallies where we're not welcome. We, we you know, RBG don't uh, stick out their hand to the white man and ask for things. We don't do that. Again, that's a violation. So, uh, having said that, let me um, bring up uh, Shaka Shakur's uh, statement real quick. Brother Shaka Shakur, I'm going to make this very straight to the point, man. No compromise. When I hear the compromise, when I hear the talking out, there's no talking about the enemy who has proven for 400 years that his intention is to see us in chains or beneath the earth. Period. <clears throat> so, these attempts or that standing on the stage to me 
about as much as NFL owners coming out and taking a knee. <laughs> How are you going to take a knee when you still have these black men under your control? You're still oppressing and exploiting them every Sunday, so I don't care about you taking a knee. I know where your stance is. Me getting on the stage and saying a few words to a crowd of people who didn't come here to hear me. They came here because they have an agenda which is destroying me. So, what does that mean? You said a few things, they heard you. And while they were hearing him speak, somewhere in this country they were killing one of us. While they were listening to that man speak, our brother Herman Bell was being assaulted by these coward fascists. A brother who was a liberation fighter, an African. Thank you. Jose LaSalle, founder, leader of CPU. I watched Patrol Union. Um, it was simple, man. I already put it out there. I denounced them, and we want nothing to do with them. We're very militant revolutionary, and we believe that the step that he took, the hawk took, derails what we've been doing. And we've been on the street fighting the pigs uh, face to face. And we're not going to allow him or any other group to uh, derail what we're doing. So we definitely don't want any association with. BLM, um, New York City, whatever, yeah. or whatever they want to call themselves, and and we don't want to associate ourselves with them, and that's that's really point blank. So you know they keep their distance from us, and and we don't give too shit about what they do. But we're gonna to continue to fight for the people that are most oppressed, and we're gonna to continue to try to liberate our black and brown brothers and sisters from the condition they're in, and that's, right. that's what we're going to speak to. What though exactly? Uh, to speak to the comments from DC or. Uh, well, the the whole situation, uh, we discussed that at issue at hand, which is item number four, the uh, attending of the Moore rally, the Trump rally, uh -huh. the comments that were made at that rally, and any relationship going forward that BLM GNY intends to have with the grassroots activist movement. Okay. All under the, you know, while under the RBG colors. Because if, if the RBG colors weren't involved, yeah. this meeting probably wouldn't be down. This is a national in, uh, symbol, and it's connected to it's thousands of others, you know, yeah. those that came before us also. You know what I'm saying? That paved the way. Yeah. And, you know, it, this is not, not a game. This is, an, again, a national symbol. So, you know, that's part of it also. <clears throat> again, if the RBG wasn't, in, if, if people wouldn't have RBG, it probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be an issue. Oh. I understand what you're saying. I'm I very just, familiar with yeah, RBG. We, we and, um, I mean, I, I didn't agree with what Hulk did in D.C. I told him that. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's basically the extent of it. I mean, I would like to continue to move forward with doing the work because the work isn't done. Um, shit's still fucked up in my hood and probably in y'all hoods too. So I don't get too distracted on that as far as the bickering and all that because we spend a whole lot of time doing that and it don't solve shit. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? And, and it just shows that that we know how to fight, but we, don't, we never prove that we can get along while everybody else on the other side, like the white supremacists, are very organized and effective in everything that they try to do, but they find a common cause to move forward on. But that's where my focus be at. But you gotta understand, this is not bickering. Yeah. This is not bickering. I mean, you know what I'm saying? This is serious issue, serious. Okay. You know, and, and so, you know, I'm, what you're saying has validity, yeah, we all do need to, you know, uh, learn to uh, meet and work together, you know, in harmony and peace. But there's regulations, there's guidelines and rules and, you know, protocols and things that need to be uh, adhered to. I mean, but at the same time, then those rules have to be, like, expressed and, and agreed upon, too. I'm not saying that I defend anything that he said, because I don't. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that. I don't stand behind that, and I've talked to him about that. But at the same time, I think that you got to give the person a chance, too. And you know what I mean? Express those rules, agree to those rules, and then we can move forward. Then you can say, hey, listen, we agreed to this on said date, and you did this afterwards. That's why he should have come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. He had the opportunity to speak for The leaders set out, set out yeah. a, a actual response, saying, distance them themselves from Newsom. So if he's if his logo is Black Lives Matter New York chapter or Greater New York, he totally misrepresented Black Lives Matter period because the leaders, the president, the three women that are queer, straight, and gay did not if I'm not sure, but they did not 
fall in line or go along with his, with his bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but I'm going to say this real quick. He spoke to a man that had 8,000 people, members. It was a militia, gun carrying. We're not talking about people that just come up to you and punch you in your face. We're talking about gun carriers, one gun period, minimally. Assault rifles, they have a freaking, like, they can't, they will outdo an army. One bullet, one life. Yeah. So if we're to take, we're to calculate how many bullets one magazine holds times 8,000 people, he compromised our safety as black people. Yeah. Yeah. He put my life in danger, your life, your children's life. That's the problem that I have. It's my life. It's not so much about trying to get along just to Yes. Get along, mm -hmm. like Shannon said. It's our safety. If we're at war, he's he just committed treason. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Okay. He committed treason. This is Black Lives Matter. They declared war on us. Mm -hmm. We've been at war for over 400 years, and we didn't even know about it. We just we're just waking up. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna go and I'm sorry, and you're gonna go and shake hands, normalize white supremacy, militia. Not even the white supremacy mentality. Militia. Men that carry guns and want to kill us and wake up every morning wanting and dreaming of hanging a black man from a tree. And that's all I got to say. Um, I'm Kim Ortiz and I am with NYC Shook Down. I'll be very brief and to the point. Um, we prided ourselves on a no platform for fascists. Like that was you know, clear to the point, point blank period. And we're honestly super offended and we feel really disrespected because what Hawk did and what BLM GNY did in one photo op, in one stunt, was dismantle a lot of the work that a lot of our groups have been doing for fucking years. I'm sorry about the cursing. And um, it's extremely disrespectful because when we say no platform for fascists, we mean no platform for fascists. So the conversation went from let's punch Nazis to oh no, but let's hear both sides out. We're done with that. It's been hundreds and hundreds of years of that. So um, just from NYC shut it down, um, BLM GNY is not welcome at any People's Monday. They're not welcome at any of our actions. And um, we ask that they do not ask us to come out for any of their actions. That's done, that's dead. Black and brown and indigenous people don't need to be given uh, an opportunity right. to speak. Yes. Because to be honest, we don't have to ask to be in the front of the bus. We are in the front of the bus. That's right. And what really irritated me is that the problem that came arose is that there was a security culture in hand and there was not a consensus process that allowed people who are uncomfortable with the idea. It was so driven to bigotry, it was dismissive of like queer experience of being uncomfortable in that space. Naomi felt like they were silenced and gaslighted because they felt like they didn't have any sort of authority over a man who was deci deciding what was right at that moment. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about group, we're talking about collective experience, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're deciding on your own what's best for you, does not necessarily is best for other people in that right. space. That's right. You have women and queer people in that space standing in that stage. If they would have tackled them mm -hmm. with a simply one wrong word, mm -hmm. that is a disgrace for Hoods for Justice because a lot of Hoods for Justice built anti-police experience. My God, we shut down the parade mm -hmm. to blockade the parade to not let the NYPD in. And I feel mm -hmm. like there is no... I'm going to make it clear, there is no delusion over the type of abolition we're going for. For the last three years alone, we've been talking about abolition, ab abolishing the police. We're not talking about humoring white supremacy. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if he is not within that page, he has to take a step back mm -hmm. and re-educate himself as mm -hmm. to what his position is. Mm -hmm. Because there's a, there's a leader, but we have to remember he was not an elected leader for mm -hmm. everybody in this space. Exactly. He can choose to be a leader, exactly. but it's not mutually so consented. All right, well, before this gets out okay. of control, I am the moderator, yeah. so sorry. Mm -hmm. That's we beautiful. must leave the space by 8 p.m. And to back it up at the rear before the closing remarks will be my self-wide accountability. Um, what wide accountability's position is this? Black liberation is a life or death generations. Mm -hmm.
Everything we say, every step we take, every move we make are detrimental to our lives. And we move with that in mind. So with that said, why accountability finds that Hawk Newsom and the Black Lives Matter of Greater New York was completely out of order in one entering the mother of all rallies rally and Trump rally without consultation with other groups that he has in, inserted himself into organizing with. So that was the first level of disunity by not consulting with the lawyers on what you plan to do. If you plan to do it as public, you did strong under the RBG flag and I am in agreement with that. Carrying the red, black, and green totally takes a different tone in your conduct and you will be viewed as a pan-Africanist. How are you moving as a pan-Africanist at a Trump rally, shaking hands, picking up white babies, and have your pre-prepared statement about how we are making progress? That sounded like he went to Acme to buy pre-prepared statements in a can for $5.99. We are all smarter than that. And we are also above that. This meeting was not convened because Black Lives Matter of Greater New York went to one rally. When this meeting was repeated hypocrisy from the organization and this was the coup de grace. Hawk Newsom has publicly stated on behalf of Y Accountability that police have no platform, that police are our perpetual enemy. Anyone is free to view that video publicly. Then you turn around three weeks later and say that you are not an anti-cop, you're anti-bad cop. I cannot trust you in the street with my life. Are you joking? That type of hypocrisy must be exposed Absolutely. and be denounced. It's unfortunate that a black man that carries the stature, that carries the voice, the vocal ability, the education, and the experience will sink so low as to align himself with people that threaten our lives every single day. And in keeping with NYC Shut It Down crew, the Black Lives Matter, and other organizations that have openly stated in this table, Black Lives Matter of Greater New York cannot, will not, and may not ever, they are permanently banned from organizing with Y Accountability for those reasons. It is very unfortunate that other members in that organization were dragged into that. And he did that without your approval or consensus building, but your so-called leader did that to you. And you must make a decision at this juncture whether or not aligning with that is in your best interest. Because now he is exposed as a fraud, as an opportunist, as willing to say anything in any environment in front of anyone to get the claps and applause. I'm not dying for that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's very unfortunate. I feel very unfortunate for the folks that were previously or may currently be aligned with him in this room. So, and, and we will not allow, and I hope all organizations do this, but it is your choice. We will not allow Black Lives Matter of Greater New York to use previous organizing work with us as a platform for legitimacy. You will not be on the internet. You will not be on white man CNN legitimizing yourself of the grassroots. You are of yourself. That's right. And to disrespect us by believing that you did not have to appear personally. I don't care if I said bring your motherfucking right. ass here. Yeah, right. You needed to be yeah, here right. with all of the groups that you have no problem taking the mic from yes, at action. Mm -hmm. right. like okay.